Welcome everybody to this week's Scientists Answer Your Questions webinar presented by Grassroots Health. I'm Jen Aliano, Communications Director for Grassroots Health, and I'm very excited to be presenting today's topic, Racial and Ethnic Disparities in Infant Mortality, a Vitamin D Problem. And answering this question for us today is Dr. William Grant. Um, Dr. Grant is one of our scientist panel members and he is also the founding director of the Sunlight Nutrition and Health Research Center. And before I introduce Dr. Grant, um, I wanted to address everybody who has submitted questions regarding how much vitamin D should I take? And we've got this very helpful chart on our website. Uh, if you just go to grassrootshealth.net, you'll be able to download this chart and calculate, okay, if I am at 20 nanograms per milliliter and I want to get to, for example, 50, I should be taking about 4,300 IU per day. And you can do those calculations for yourself based on what your starting level is and what your desired level is. So we really appreciate everybody who takes the time to submit their questions. Um, please keep in mind that we may not get to every single question that has been submitted or is submitted during the live event. Um, however, we will do our best and any questions that we do not address today, we will try to get back to you either individually or in a future webinar. So Dr. Grant, I'm going to go ahead and hand the presentation over to you. Thanks again, Dr. Grant, for taking your time to be with us today. Thank you. Thank you for hosting this. Oops. I can't seem to be, get beyond the, oh, there we are. Okay, so here's the outline of my presentation. The question is, what is the cause of black-white disparities in infant mortality rates? The primary risk factors identified in the literature are preterm birth and low birth weight. Uh, so it's important then to look at the effects of vitamin D deficiency during pregnancy and the differences in vitamin D levels between black and white women. Then to ask uh, if there are alternate explanations for the disparities and then what the recommendations are in case it's vitamin D. So from the, uh, I've gone through the literature and I've pulled out uh, information primarily from abstracts. So the uh, for example, in this one, the, the text is given in the middle. Uh, the, the, um, the, what's green highlighted is the important part of the uh, text. Uh, the source is given down below. And these slides will be available at the Grassroots Health website, so you can look at the slides in more detail at your leisure. So this uh, uh, paper reports that black infants are 2.5 times more likely to die in infancy compared to non-Hispanic white infants. This disparity is largely related to the greater incidence among black infants of prematurity and low birth weight, congenital malformations, sudden infant death syndrome, and unintentional injuries. Uh, another paper found that for non-Hispanic black women, 78% of their elevated infant mortality rate compared with non-Hispanic white women was due to their higher percentage of preterm births. Now the question is, is it preterm birth or low birth weight? Well, the two factors are, are closely related. Uh, I also did a search of PubMed and found uh, 487 entries related to low birth weight and infant mortality rate in the United States, 81 entries related to preterm birth, and 33 entries related to small for gestational age. So it turns out the combination of, of preterm birth and low birth weight is important. Uh, compared to non-Hispanic whites born term and appropriate for gestational age, uh, non-Hispanic black children born small for gestational age and preterm had a risk of death of a hazard ratio of 4.8. Um, and for white non-Hispanic whites, uh, the same uh, finding was a, a ratio of 4.5. Um, so being born small and, and early are, are both risk factors for uh, early infant mortality. So what is the role of vitamin D deficiency during pregnancy? 
Having optimal vitamin D levels during pregnancy is very important, as discussed by Carol Wagner two weeks ago. Low vitamin D levels during pregnancy are associated with increased risk of preterm birth and low birth weight, and factors linked to those outcomes including gestational diabetes, preeclampsia, and bacterial vaginosis. And so let me go over the evidence for these uh, factors. Um, a meta-analysis of, of vitamin D uh, levels and preterm birth and other adverse effects uh, based on 24 studies found that women with um, vitamin D levels less than 20 nanograms per milliliter in pregnancy experienced an increased risk of preeclampsia with an odds ratio of 2.09, which means over a factor of 2.1 times the risk of, uh, compared with those with higher vitamin D levels. Gestational diabetes mellitus, an odds ratio of 1.38, preterm birth of odds ratio 1.58, and a small for gestational age of uh, odds ratio 1.52. These are all statistically significant uh, results. In other words, they're not due to uh, chance. Uh, gestational diabetes. Uh, in a study in Washington State, among women who developed gestational diabetes, maternal vitamin D levels at an average of 16 weeks of gestation were significantly lower than controls, 24 versus 30 nanograms per milliliter. Each five nanogram per milliliter decrease in 25 hydroxy vitamin D concentration was related to a 30% increase in risk of gestational diabetes. And again, this is statistically uh, significant. Um, a study in New York State found that gestational diabetes was associated with an increased risk of adverse perinatal events among all ethnic groups. Um, and the odds ratios of 1.3 to 1.8 for preterm birth. Overall, Caribbean, Sub-Saharan African, and African-American women tend to show a larger relative impact of, of uh, gestational diabetes. Preeclampsia is another uh, risk factor. Um, this paper by uh, Lisa Bodner uh, and colleagues found that as vitamin D levels increase from um, very low to very high, the risk of uh, preeclampsia decreased. Unfortunately, they didn't have um, uh, enough people in the study to make uh, a good estimate of the uncertainty. I mean, there's a large uncertainty associated with this. Also notice, notice that the units here are in nanomoles per liter. To get nanograms per milliliter, uh, divide by 2.5. So 50 in this case is 20 nanograms, 100 is 40, et cetera. Uh, so here's a study about preeclampsia and preterm delivery in Florida. Women who experienced um, recurrent preeclampsia were at elevated risk for low birth weight, very low birth weight, preterm, and very preterm. The risk was most pronounced for preterm infants, an odds ratio of 1.58. Subgroup, subgroup analysis demonstrated that infants born to black mothers with recurrent preeclampsia experienced the most elevated risk across all the racial ethnic subgroups, and this was most pronounced for very low birth weight and very preterm, with more than a threefold increase in risk. Um, one caveat is that perhaps preeclampsia among uh, uh, black mothers, even white mothers, could be also related to um, uh, hypertension uh, independent of vitamin D. Bacterial vaginosis, a study in Pennsylvania by Lisa Bodner and colleagues. Bacterial vaginosis is, is a highly prevalent vaginal infection that is associated with adverse pregnancy outcomes. Vitamin D exerts an influence on the immune system and may play a role in DV. So this is a study involving 469 women, and they found that uh, for higher vitamin D concentrations, there was lower risk of bacterial vaginosis. And the conclusion was that vitamin D deficiency is associated with bacterial vaginosis and may contribute to the strong racial disparity in the prevalence of bacterial vaginosis. Another factor, um, to consider is, is tumor necrosis factor alpha. Uh, this is an inflammatory compound, and um, what was found in this study was that there was a large ratio of TNN alpha to soluble uh, uh, TNN, um, TNFR in black cases, which may be indicative of a, of a TNN alpha mediated pathological process of preterm birth in blacks but not in whites. A, um, 
oops, a, 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 a supplementation study um, in Germany where they gave uh, people starting with 12 nanograms per milliliter uh, 3,300 IU per day of vitamin D or uh, placebo in a double blind manner for 12 months while participating in a weight reduction program found that the mean vitamin D level increased by 22 nanograms per milliliter um, in the vitamin D group but only by 5 nanograms per milliliter in the placebo group. Uh, losing weight does increase the vitamin D concentration because uh, larger bodies get the, more or less the same vitamin D intake but uh, have to spread it over a large, larger mass. Um, so the reduction in TN-alpha was 10.2% for the vitamin D level, uh, vitamin D people compared with 3.2% for the uh, placebo level. So there's a modest effect of vitamin D on TN-alpha concentrations. Oops. I hope we're having prob uh, problems getting, uh, there we go. So uh, African American, um, African Americans have lower vitamin D level levels than white Americans, and, and vitamin D levels have decreased in the past decades. The prevalence of vitamin D levels of less than 10 nanograms per milliliter in non-Hispanic blacks rose from 9% during uh, NHANES 3, 1988 to 1994, to 29% during NHANES uh, follow-on of 201-204 with a corresponding decrease in the prevalence of levels of 30 nanograms per milliliter or more from 12% to 3%. In the second period from 2001 to 2004, mean vitamin D levels for white women aged 29 to, 20 to 39 years draw, uh, was 28 nanograms per milliliter, um, but for black women it was 14 nanograms per milliliter. So this is a, quite a difference, a factor of two difference. Now we have a caveat regarding vitamin D as the explanation for disparity. This is from Lisa Bodner, who's done quite a few studies on vitamin D and pregnancy outcomes. Although vitamin D is a promising candidate influence on black-white disparities in preeclampsia, spontaneous preterm birth, fetal growth restriction, and gestational diabetes, these associations require further study in large samples of black U.S. women. Because vitamin D deficiency is widespread and black-white disparities in pregnancy outcomes and infant survival have been resistant to previous interventions, research to test vitamin D as a casual factor is of major public health significance. Uh, we need help on, on getting uh, to the next slide. So, are there alternate explanations for preterm and low birth weight disparities? Next. Other possible explanations uh, are found through a search at PubMed. Other factors identified as risk factors for these outcomes, but not necessarily as explanations for black-white disparities include smoking, obesity, outdoor air pollution, parity of 2 plus, low water intake, uh, and heavy alcohol or cocaine cocaine use. Next. Uh, maternal obesity is a very important risk factor for infant mortality rates for white Americans, and maybe, maybe not for black Americans. I did a, a used data from 2005-2007 and showed that the state level obesity rates, which are based primarily on whites, have a very high correlation with, with infant mortality rate for whites, uh, but not for blacks. Um, this doesn't mean that there is not a risk factor for blacks, but um, it was certainly an effect for whites. Um, next. So conclusion is that vitamin D deficiency is a significant risk factor for adverse pregnancy outcomes among white Americans. Vitamin D deficiency is, is common in darker skin ethnic groups. Vitamin D deficiency may help explain higher infant mortality rates for African Americans compared to white Americans but more, more research is required. Next. 
So if vitamin D deficiency affects disparities in infant mortality rates, we have the following recommendation. It's based on the randomized controlled trial by Bruce Hollis, Carol Wagner, and colleagues, and reported two weeks ago, in which they found it took vitamin D levels of 20, 40 nanograms per, per milliliter to raise the 125 dihydroxy vitamin D uh, level to the optimum uh, levels. To reach this level, it takes about 4,000 IU per day uh, of vitamin D3. They found no adverse effects. And 125 dihydroxy vitamin D is the active metabolite of vitamin D and exerts most of its effects through regulating blood calcium levels and activating the vitamin D receptors, which in turn control many processes and affect the expression of over 200 genes. And during pregnancy, gene expression is very important for the developing fetus. Okay, that concludes my formal presentation. Now we can go to the questions from the viewers. Question number one is what should be optimal blood levels of 25 hydroxy vitamin D for pregnant women? Uh, based on the study by uh, Wagner and Hollis and colleagues, uh, it should be 40 nanograms per milliliter or 100 nanomoles per liter uh, in order to optimize the 125 dihydroxy vitamin D levels which control gene expression and calcium metabolism. Uh, next, how often should I uh, have vitamin D levels tested? Well, Grassroots Health recommend uh, every six months. Um, the, um, if one starts taking vitamin D and changes from, say, not taking supplements to taking supplements, it'll probably take a, at least three months to um, reach a point where um, you have a steady state level. Um, also recall that, that um, sunlight is an important source of vitamin D. So vitamin D levels are going to be higher in summer, lower in winter for the same uh, oral vitamin D intake. So um, this gives you some ideas on, on uh, well, also point out, if you take vitamin D, supplements have your, are tested, you're then going to modify your supplements to reach whatever vitamin D level you want. So then you want to retest again in three to six months to find out what's, what has changed. Next question, number three, uh, how can we help mothers who are pregnant or breastfeeding to have sufficient vitamin D levels to satisfy their own needs as well as the, their infants? Well, uh, I think you have to get the information to the mothers. And um, I mean, the inf information is there from the uh, study by Wagner and Hollis. Uh, the information can be uh, give, delivered through articles in journals, uh, talking to doctors. Um, I found out recently that the newspapers are pretty much only going to cover only cover the vitamin D stories that come from official uh, bodies, such as the Institute of Medicine. Um, they won't take, um, I mean, they will publish uh, the latest findings and research uh, once, but they're not going to keep repeating that uh, on and on. So it may take some creative ideas uh, to 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 get the information out to the, um, the people that can benefit most. It would be very nice if, if La Leche League would, would um, uh, understand the importance of vitamin D and include that as part of the recommendation, or the WIC, pro WIC program, uh, WIC program. Um, but it takes a lot of effort to get the, the large organizations to um, change their positions. Next. Do the recommendations for vitamin D intake and supplementation and or desired 25 hydroxy vitamin D concentrations vary by race or ethnicity? Well, certainly the vitamin D intake um, uh, ha is affected by, by uh, the, the vitamin D levels reached for intake by different races is affected by the starting value of vitamin D uh, uh, affected by sunlight and UV uh, UV levels. Um, since blacks have much darker skin, which uh, they make vitamin D from sunlight at one third to one fifth the rate of white Americans. So African Americans are going to have low vitamin D levels compared to white Americans um, if they're not taking supplements. Vitamin D levels increase rapidly um, for a given intake. For, for low levels of vitamin D, 
but then at high levels, they, they sort of reach the same uh, amount. So if if everybody took 4,000 IU per day uh, for the same body mass and, 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 and so on, um, the, the recommendation would be the same. Um, because at high levels, the, the, the body only converts a, a certain amount of the um, uh, vitamin D uh, as, as a function of, of intake and, and, and vitamin D level. Now, in terms of desired concentrations, um, African Americans and Africans have a different calcium metabolism than white Americans. African Americans um, have much stronger bones, for example, than white Americans, even though they have lower vitamin D levels. And I think this is a, a, a reaction to growing up in you know, just ethnic background, being in Africa, where uh, there was it was a very arid environment, so they had to have a, a more of a calcium conservation uh, system. Um, um, but for other uh, uh, effects such as infections, cancer, cardiovascular disease, uh, autoimmune disease, autism, uh, any other effects, um, the, the, the vitamin D, the constant vitamin D concentration health outcome relationship appears to be independent of race or ethnicity. Uh, for example, I did a study on, um, cal on cancer survival rates and looked at the, uh, the lit literature on survival for about a dozen types of cancer comparing African Americans to white Americans. And the normal uh, um, research looks at socioeconomic status, stage of di diagnosis, and treatment. And in, 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 the re in the review, in the average finding was that African Americans have about a 25% lower survival rate from cancer after diagnosis compared to white Americans considering all these factors. And what I've suggested is that vitamin D levels, the difference between black and white Americans explains the 25% difference. So um, now in terms of optimal vitamin D level for someone of Afro-Caribbean or African-American descent, um, 40 to 60 nanograms is, is a good value. Um, certainly, uh, uh, there's a the rapid reduction in, in adverse health outcomes going from 10 to 20 nanograms per milliliter. There's certain, there's more reductions going uh, in adverse effects going from 20 to 30 nanograms. There are a number of papers that uh, show that above 30 nanograms is beneficial. There's some papers showing above 40 nanograms is beneficial. Unfortunately, there are not too many studies showing, uh, showing the effects of above 50 nanograms. But on the other hand, um, there don't seem to be any adverse effects to speak of um, below uh, 100 nanograms per milliliter. Uh, next, do we really know that uh, 25 OH level of 20 nanograms per milliliter means the same thing in whites and blacks, and should there be race-specific definitions of a deficiency? Well, as I mentioned uh, previously, there's a difference in, in um, calcium metabolism between blacks and whites, and so if we're talking just about um, bone health and, and risk of fractures, uh, there would be uh, a race-specific uh, definition of deficiency. But since we now know that vitamin D has many benefits, um, cancer, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, uh, infections, autoimmune diseases, et cetera, uh, I don't think there uh, should be race-specific definitions in deficiency. Next. Does cow's milk with added vitamin D play a significant role concerning ethnic infant mortality? Well, cow's milk, when fortified, has 100 uh, international units of vitamin D per cup. Uh, so if one drank, uh, since um, uh, Hollis and Wagner showed that it took 4,000 IU per day to reach optimal vitamin D levels for blacks, whites, and Hispanics, uh, that would be, um, let's see, if, uh, was that 100 cups of, of milk per day, or, or at least uh, quite a few cups of milk per day, and that 
Um, so vitamin D is not going to really, um, um, cow's milk is not going to really have much of an effect on ethnic infant mortality rates. Next. Do you see any issues with vitamin D3 derived from non-food sources like lanolin? Well, lanolin is uh, sheep's wool lanolin irradiated with UVB is the primary source of, of vitamin D in most supplements. However, the lanolin is, redu is removed uh, during the process. So there's probably not much lanolin uh, in the supplement. On the other hand, I've heard that maybe one or 2% of people who take a vitamin D supplements derived from, from uh, sheep's wool lanolin have some sort of reaction to it. Now, just what that is and why, I don't know. But um, if somebody has a problem taking uh, vitamin D from supplements, uh, there's the alternate approach of getting some, uh, vitamin D from sun's uh, UVB or from um, artificial uh, UVB as in tanning lamps, tanning beds. Next. Many African-American women seem to suffer yeast infection and bacterial vaginosis, which are direct causes of preterm birth. They also seem to have low vitamin D levels. Does vitamin D have an effect on these issues? Well, vitamin D certainly has an effect on bacterial vaginosis, as I discussed earlier. However, I, I, I checked PubMed this morning and cannot find any uh, uh, papers discussing yeast infections and uh, vitamin D. Yeast is primary, uh, well, the primary source of food for yeast is sugar. So I think uh, women concerned about yeast infection should try to cut out all added sugar from their diet. Next. Someone is interested in the comments on the Wake Forest study showing a positive relationship between calcified plaque and large arteries, a measure of atherosclerosis or hardening of the arteries, and circulating vitamin D levels in black patients. I looked at that study, and um, the data are shown in a scatter plot, and the data are quite scattered. It appears to me that the correlation is very low, um, and the people in the study were diabetics. I did find another paper uh, this morning by um, uh, uh, Dong et al. And what they found, what they, they had a study in, in Georgia, and they took um, 49 uh, boys, uh, black uh, boys and girls aged 16 years and either gave them 400 IU per day or 2,000 IU per day. And they found that um, um, those taking the 2,000 IU per day actually had a reduction in calcified arteries compared to those uh, on the control. So I think this counters the, the, uh, the other paper. Okay, are there any uh, questions from the uh, speaker, uh, from the audience that came in after these questions? Um, we do have a couple and we can probably spend about a minute answering them. Um, okay. The first is, what is the best method of vitamin D3 supplementation, liquid, pills? Uh, what's your take on that? I think uh, I would recommend pills uh, and it should be taken with the largest meal of the day and um, um, maybe ca take calcium and, uh, help and magnesium helps as well. Um, the reason I say pills is because you, you get a of a pretty much a fixed dosage. Uh, with liquid, you may have a, some variability, but uh, for some people, maybe uh, like infants, uh, the liquid might be better. Next. Okay, and we have time for one other because I do have a couple of questions um, of my own. Could the decrease in vitamin D levels um, in African Americans over, oh, sorry, um, over the years also be due to current recommendations to use sunscreen? Uh, there are a number of factors contributing to the decrease. Uh, one is the sun scare uh, campaign and, and increased use of sunscreen, although probably African Americans don't use it as much as white Americans. Uh, also people are getting heavier uh, and, and heavy people have lower vitamin D. Also people are spending more time indoors, behind computers, etc. Uh, we're not just not spending as much time out of doors. So there are quite a few mm -hmm. reasons. Okay. Um, so a couple other questions that came in uh, through registration. How can I educate members of the birthing community, the midwives, the doulas, and the OBGYNs that work with them about this issue? Uh, well, I think you've got to get the story together and take it to these people. 
uh, it would be helpful to, to get pu papers published in the journals they read. That would probably be the best way. Okay. And last question, what are some strategies to engage the African American community about the need to increase vitamin D to improve birth outcomes as well as other issues, other health issues? Well, I think one has to go to the health leaders in the African American community. I know that for African American men, there's a, a, an effort to reach African American men through their barbers, and they have they can test blood pressure there, and it works very well. But African American women don't go to barbers, so maybe working through their uh, hairdressers. Okay, and other local organizations, perhaps like churches that you can think of. Right. Right. Okay, great. So, um, again, I wanted to thank you so much, Dr. Grant, for your time this morning in um, presenting on this topic. Um, I would like to say that this webinar is being recorded and it will be posted on our website um, by tomorrow for viewing at any other time. Um, next week, we will have Dr. Cedric Garland. On again, he will be discussing his recent publication on serum vitamin D deficiency increasing the risk of premenopausal breast cancer. Um, again, this presentation was brought to you by Grassroots Health. If you'd like to learn more about what we do or if you'd like to join our D Action study by ordering your vitamin D test kit, um, you can visit us at grassrootshealth.net. And thank you, everybody, for attending. Again, thanks, Dr. Grant, and we look forward to seeing you all next week. Thank you.